Hello there. Welcome back to the Groomsman. I'll be your host, Jonathan. Today I'm using Lamano Chemoid. I don't know, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Lamano Chemoid, I think. Uh, the Hand That Bites is uh, what it translates to. It's a, very much a black tea scent. Uh, it's the primary note I get. Black tea, and then a really nice balance of like agarwood and sandalwood. So it's kind of like a creamy black tea, like a black tea with, with cream. There's a slight hint of a, a very sweet kind of floral from the jasmine, but it's it's really light and it just kind of passes in and out of the scent. Really, really nice. Uh, it's got labnum in it as well and cardamom. Mostly I just get like that black tea and that kind of creamy, woody scent. It works really well together. I really like black tea scents. Um, if you like black tea scents, you probably like it. If you don't like black tea, maybe not so much. Uh, but I got that all up here with my uh, my chisel and hound brush, that K2E soap, it's a nice shine to it. There's a chisel and hound with uh, their, I don't know, V12 paint or anything. I don't remember what version it is. I bought it off the Bicel Trade page. I don't remember what, they, what the version they said it is. So uh, I'm gonna try and do pre-shave today. I've been using this uh, Badger pre-shave oil for a while just cause it's inexpensive and available locally at my like local green grocers type store. Um, but I miss kind of having Paraso. The pre-shave oil is okay. Um, it works. It doesn't really like knock my socks off. Um, the pre-shave I always kind of really liked the most was Paraso pre-shave, which is kind of, you know, cheap if you're buying it overseas. You know, in Italy, it's like, you know, three or four bucks, you know, conversion rates from Euro and everything. It's a really inexpensive pre-shave. And then obviously exports over here and there's upcharges and usually it's around 10 bucks to get a jar of pre-shave here plus shipping, you know, looking at 12 to 14 bucks and which is not that great of a deal usually if i try to get it i try to get it as an add-on as something else i'm buying from like maggards or trc but I haven't had anything else to buy from there in a while and i didn't want to buy just that because i don't want to pay 15 bucks and 15 percent of that or 50 percent of that goes to shipping costs which is a little outrageous so i haven't bought it in a while just because of that but then i don't remember what kind of keyed in a little mental process but i remember when i first started using process pre-shave i thought the Texture process and everything kind of reminded me of Noxima, the the face cream, and that popped into my head again recently this last week. And so I started doing a couple searches, and there was some forum like on Badger and Blade and some of the other uh, online forums on Reddit and stuff. I don't really participate in the written forums where people have screen names to hide behind because they kind of get toxic. But uh, I do go back and read through some of the old. There is some good information to find in there. Um, and there was a whole thread about people using Noctua for a pre-shave or just using it to shave. I remember having used it to shave when I first joined the military. Uh, it was recommended by my recruiter actually when I joined the Air Force. Um, worked really well, I remember that. Uh, made my skin feel really smooth, but it tended to clog up the razor. I was using like, I don't remember, some multi-blade. I don't remember what was coming out back then. I mean, I was 2000 was when I joined. Mach 3 maybe, I don't know. Um, so that was why I quit using it was because it tended to clog up my razor and that was my biggest issue with, with well, other than the irritation, the in-front hairs and the clog razor always kind of gave me a lot of issues. But I picked up a jar of Noxima Original with menthol eucalyptus scent, not menthol, eucalyptus. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that on there, not a lot. I'm gonna make my face wet real quick. And I'm gonna apply it just like I do the Paraso. I'm just gonna do like a little dab on each cheek and under the neck. And then I'm just gonna kind of work that in. The eucalyptus scent is not quite like Paraso eucalyptus. It's a little bit more medicinal maybe. Or maybe it's just cause it's just eucalyptus and there's other scent stuff in the Paraso, I don't know. I mean, it does smell like eucalyptus, but it smells differently. But that's how I do the process too. I just, you know, dab on each cheek, dab under each jawline, and then just kind of work it in. And then I just lather on top of it. I did go a little heavy on the water this time. It was like looking really nice. I was like, oh, I could probably add a little bit more water. And I mean, it's still fine, but it's a little soupy.
See, soupy. It's like in soap everywhere. Um, if you didn't notice before, I started lathering. I haven't shaved in like four, five days. It's been a minute. Had a three-day weekend. Uh, it's just now ending. It was a nice little three-day weekend. Had family visiting. Had some birthday this week. My youngest daughter turned four. My wife had a birthday. I'm not gonna tell you how old she turned. She beat me, but uh, my wife is younger than me. If that makes any difference. Then we had birthdays this week, and then we did uh, a water park this weekend. Was, uh, for the birthdays, we had the parties on the day of, but we went to the water park this weekend. Had a lot of fun. I'm using the brass copper cant from Aylesworth Razors. This is the plus plate. I'm uh, probably, I don't know if you can see that here, but there's a little plus on the the edge of the base plate there. Probably not. Just have to take my word for it. There's a little plus on each side of the base plate underneath the bottom. Uh, I found that I like the plus plate a little bit more than I like the original. I do like the original. I just, the plus plate's a little bit more efficient. Um, while keeping a very similar level of blade feel. Uh, for blade, I changed up blades. I've been using the seven o'clock blacks for a long time, but I went vintage today using a Chic Plus Platinum blade. Uh, I think these are made in like the seventies or so. I, uh, I was fairly new into wet shaving. Starting to get into collecting vintage stuff. And I kind of scour Facebook for razors and whatnot. And I came across this listing in New York City. I don't know how I got that. I think I was playing around with my location settings in Facebook so I could have the marketplace look in different areas. Anyways, I found this, this listing in New York and it was just a ton of chic stuff. There was a bunch, the first picture was just a ton, like a big giant mountain of like chic disposables and some chic cartridge razor. And it was just, I mean, it was a lot. It was just, you know, cartridge razors and disposable cartridge razor type razors. But at the very edge of the picture, you could almost not see it. I saw what looked like a DE. So I clicked on it and I went to the pictures and like the third or fourth one in, was, yep, they get to the side of that big mountain, they get to another side, and there was like five or six of the Chic TTO razors, the Coronas, and then um, five or six of the L type injectors, and then three or four of the N type injectors. And then just a whole mountain of blades. There was a bunch of these plus platinums. It was mostly plus platinums and the Schick Super Stainless. Both these DE blades and uh, injector blades as well in the same brand. It's all Schick stuff. But that was pretty cool. So I messaged him and had a conversation. And the lady was like, well, I don't have a problem shipping, but it'd be kind of expensive because it's a lot, so it would make a big box. And I was like, well, I don't want any of the cartridge or your disposal stuff, so you can keep that and resell that. And she was like, okay. So after that, you know, it was kind of like, gave her part of her product back, but I was still paying her the same price, so she paid for shipping. And worked out really well for both of us, I think. That first shave was, or that first pass was awesome, by the way, even though oh, I got all kinds of hair right there. Um, even with that four days growth, the, the, the plus plate, I mean, it doesn't look like much. It doesn't look like it doesn't have a huge blade gap, although the leather passes through quite easily. Um, it just mowed down that. They're super smooth, no tugging at all. The blade was really nice for a vintage plate. I've used the vintage, the Schick Plus Platinums before. I do really like them. Um, 
I just haven't for a while I've been kind of doing the the seven o'clock blacks and I only have so many of them you know they're not making them anymore they get a little expensive every once in a while I'll find a couple of cheap ones on eBay or something and I'll pick them up and add them to the hoard but I think I probably have 50 or 60 blades at the moment of just the plus platinum and then there's a few a couple three or four or five packs of the Schick Super Stainless, which are also good. They came in these little like blister packs, which I thought was cool. They're pretty similar, except this one talks about using Teflon. Uh, on the back, it's got like a little descriptor. Um, can't buy a more durable, longer lasting double edge blade. Schick takes its finest stainless steel and applies a platinum alloy to provide you with an edge that stays smooth to give you a close, safe shave, shave after shave after shave. Good marketing right there. In addition, only Schick heat bonds a layer of Teflon coating to each blade edge to give you a friction-free shaving comfort that Teflon can provide. Easy to clean too. You can get these great results when you get the Schick Plus Platinum Blade in any double edge razor. Uh, this is, they don't all say, talk about the Teflon coating. Like this one doesn't have any mention of Teflon on the, on the front or on the back, uh, but this one does. Which is kind of interesting. I'm pretty sure they both have the Teflon coating otherwise they would have named it something different. I just thought it was interesting. Maybe they were still working on uh, getting permission to use the, the Teflon name, because Teflon's a brand name, versus like PTFE is what uh, the product actually is. So maybe they're still working with Teflon to get permission to use that, that word. I do really like this razor. I mean, this is... I did a comparison shave recently with uh, this and the Overlander, which is kind of similar in blade gap and style and everything. Um, and I found this one was more efficient, a little more smooth. Ellsworth nailed it out of the park. I was glad I finally picked one of these up. I, I was looking at the, the stainless steel one that they had before. Obviously, it's the same razor head, just in stainless steel. The handle design is different. They both have cool handles. Um, but I looked at that one for a long time. And I think about getting it, and then I wouldn't, and I think about getting it, wouldn't. I don't ever know really particularly stop me. I think I just wasn't sure if the shade would kind of stand out or not. And then last year, when, when these first came out, it was late last year, I think right before Christmas actually. Um, I just remember seeing an ad for it, or not an ad, like a, well, it might be like a, an announcement on their Facebook page. And uh, they were announcing they were making the brass ones and they were doing a pre-release sale. And if you got the pre-release, it was cheaper. And it came with a little stand. I don't have a stand out here, it's in my closet. But uh, it ended up being like, I think 50 bucks, 55 bucks for the razor and the stand. It was a really good deal. And it was just the original. It wasn't, uh, they didn't have a plus plate back then. Uh, that was a really good deal for a brass razor. So I jumped on the, the pre-release and I did not regret it. I did like the original. So do you like the original. A little bit more mild than a plus plate, obviously. Um, neither of them have a lot of blade fills. I don't really want to say like, oh, it's less blade fill. I mean, probably, I guess, but not a lot because neither of them have a lot of blade fill. Slightly less efficient. But then I got the plus plate when they came out here recently. I think I missed the first batch and I got a restock or something. Super smooth. 
there's always a pass that kind of decides the razor for me that against the grain pass. So there's plenty of razors that you'll use and they'll be super smooth with the grain. And you're like, wow, this razor's great. And then you get to the against the grain and it just like skips and stutters and you start getting weepers. super smooth. It's kind of ridiculous how smooth against the grain this razor is. Like the winning has always kind of been my, my low key desert island razor. I could use that razor every day. It, it's efficient enough to get the, the level of like PBS I want, but smooth enough to be able to use every day without worrying about razor burn or over shaving. But this razor I think takes the cake. Slightly more efficient, slightly more smooth. Can't beat the looks. That's the one thing the winning doesn't have. I like the winning a lot. I'm a big proponent of it. I'm excited that Aylesworth is bringing the winning back. Uh, he's talked about making some changes to the design. Hopefully they're all positive. Um, but the look of the, the winning, gives me, can't quite beat that brass copper hand. The head style is cool, the geometry on the head. The, the winning was very much built to be the cheapest possible stainless steel safety razor that he could make. So it was basically all about the least amount of machining time that they could get in there. That's why there was very, you know, kind of unfinished edges and, you know, the, I do have the winning right here. I don't have it on the winning handle, but I don't have a razor rock handle, but you can kind of see those, the geometry. I mean, it has a certain, you know, look about it that's kind of cool. But that really that's instead of it being rounded like a regular razor they made it with all those edges because that's more machining they make it more rounded so they didn't to save some money which is fine i mean it shaves great there's no i have no qualms about that i think it, it did exactly what they wanted it enabled them to cut a few cost corners without sacrificing the shave you know it did sacrifice the looks a little bit, but can't have everything in a $50 razor, right? All right, I think I'm gonna do just a couple little touch-ups here. There's not a whole lot to touch up. I mean, this razor is so effing good. My cheeks are like glass smooth right now, it's fantastic. So I'm going to do a couple little touch-ups right here and a cold water splash and then we'll be right back and we'll talk about the post-shave result of the pre-shave and uh, yeah, see you in a minute. All right, I'm back. Thanks for staying with me. Just had a couple touch-ups there on the neck and went very smoothly. Touched up my goatee a little bit, a little line up there. Uh, kind of going back to the Van Dyke style. I think it turned out pretty well. I missed a spot right here. Or went a little, eh, we'll see. It's looking all right. Um, but the shade was as perfect as I've ever gotten. I mean, everything was great. The soap was great. The brush was great. The razor and the blade were great. Um, first juice with the pre-shave using the Noxema as a pre-shave, I think went really well. Um, I don't have any redness. Even with the touch-ups, I don't have any, like, I don't feel any irritation. I don't have any issues with the shave. Like, I didn't feel a single time, like, a hint of irritation with that shave. Uh, like a spot where I went over too much or anything. Even with the standard touch-ups that I do and having not shaved for multiple days in a row. We'll see what the splash has to say. I got the matching hand that bites splash, black tea, sandalwood, kind of a creamy black tea scent. Get a little bit more of that jasmine. Yeah, zero burn. I was like kind of braced, um, but no, actually zero burn. Alcohol-based splash, but zero burn. 
like literally as perfect a shave as I could have ever asked for. Super smooth, super BBS. There might be one spot here I always miss, like this kind of across the grain, against the grain pass, but. Perfect shave. My skin feels great. Um, I think for the for the Noxzema for the first use, I think it did exactly what I wanted to do. I think it conditioned my hair, made it a little softer, conditioned my skin, uh, made it a little softer, you know, more able to go through the shave without getting irritation, which is what I look for in a pre-shave. I'm not looking for added slickness. Um, I know there's some oils that do that for you to kind of stay on the skin. I only like the ones that stay on your skin like that. Uh, it tends to clog my pores and break me on everything. So I like stuff that'll be absorbed and used by my skin. Uh, and this, I think it went great. I don't have any redness. Um, I think it did exactly what I wanted to do. Maybe it was just a perfect shake that had a great razor and a great soap. So I'm, I'm gonna keep using this Noxema as a pre-shave routine uh, for the near future, the immediate future. I have no plan to do anything different at this moment. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll change my opinion, but uh, I'm definitely like enough to do it again. I mean, it was, I think, a great little pre-shave. It did remind me of Prosto. Um, the eucalyptus scent wasn't bad. It smells kind of strong in the tub and when you first put it on your face, but the soap, it doesn't have any, and I don't have any issues with it uh, masking the scent of the soap, uh, which would kind of turn me off a little bit there. But the, the soap scent came right through the pre-shave. Didn't have any issues with that. Every once in a while I'd get like a hint of eucalyptus, you know, around my face while I was doing the shave. But that was it, just a small, very hint. But like I said, it was separate from the, the scent of the soap. I didn't have any issues with that. Great shave. I'm going to use probably this Hoshitsu Elixir from a and &E, little post-shave serum. I usually use like one pump or maybe one and a half pumps, it's just a little extra post-shave. I like it. Uh, a little expensive, I think it was around 30 bucks for the one ounce. And uh, I can't find any more, they don't have any more on the a and &E site. Um, I know he's branching out to his different things. He's got the Tiger Bite, no that's not right. The Cobra Spit line for his like tattoo care and uh, I think this was still listed on that site the cover spit site for the the tattoo stuff is uh they kind of remarketed a little bit as a tattoo skincare thing but it works great as a post shave that's what it was originally made for as a, a post shave and that was video hope you liked it uh if you've ever used anything creative or pre-shave that kind of gets those good results where you know I'm looking at like skin conditioning and hair softening so that I get less irritation in it's all about the post shave for me um, let me know. Or if you ever use a shake plus five. Some of the old stock uh, vintage stuff is pretty awesome. Uh, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.